You know, the sad thing about this whole thing is that in Nigeria, 95% of persons who develop chronic kidney disease die from it. Hi everybody, my name is Francis Odua, most people call me Dr. Franco. I'm a preventive health expert. I want to talk about the increased incidences of chronic kidney disease, particularly amongst younger persons. When I say younger, I mean from age later 30s, 40s and 50s, you know. I saw on Instagram Williams Uchemba soliciting for support for a certain person who has succumbed to chronic kidney disease. I'll call it CKD. In 2022, I can recall DJ Jimmy Jazz and Idris Abdul Kadrim expressing gratitude for the success of their kidney transplants. I'm sure most of you guys remember Muna, Muna Obiekwe, the villain of Nollywood, and of course the creative genius called OJBG is real, who sang that song. Now, if you look at all of this, you see that most of these individuals are more like in their... Muna was 36 or so when he succumbed to CKD. They're more like in their late 30s, early 40s, 40s and later 40s. You know, so this is worrying and it's a worrisome trend, which epidemiologists and public health experts are beginning to look at, particularly in Nigeria. That are we looking at a situation where there's going to be a greater incidence or greater incidences amongst the generation X, Y and Z for various reasons, maybe genetic, environmental, lifestyle factors, etc. You know, the sad thing about this whole thing is that in Nigeria, 95% of persons who develop chronic kidney disease die from it. You know, the remaining 5% are the lucky ones who after repeated episodes of dialysis, 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 we will still need to do a kidney transplant to save their lives. The kidneys play a very vital role in the human body. The kidneys function includes filtering of blood, filtering of wastes or called toxins, removing of waste products, you know, controlling what we call the electrolytes. Those are small chemicals in the body. You know, so it plays a very pivotal role in the general optimal wellness of a human being. So I decided to make this video to bring forth tips on how to ensure that most people or Nigerians at large don't succumb to chronic kidney disease. My first tip one is having a general sense of health consciousness. Look, body no be for your wood. As we age, age on its own is a risk factor. As we age, there's what we call wear and tear, particularly if you have risk factors like maybe familial history. If there's if your mama then gets high BP or your papa then gets high BP, there's a high likelihood that you may get it. You know, having a health consciousness includes you being aware of your family history. You know. The mother that murdered my mother, mother and mother, so is my nephew. Hey! Don't let the mother that murdered your mother come to murder you and murder your generation. Mba, don't let that happen. You know, you should be aware of what's happening around you, your family history, health-wise. You know, your sibling history, medical history, and all of that. I think as we advance in age, most people should adopt doing regular health checks, regular health checks. Annually, every year, you can go to a good hospital, consult your doctor, go to a good diagnostic facility and tell them, look, I want to know the state of my liver, my kidneys, you know, my sugar levels, my cholesterol levels. You should know your numbers. You should have them at your fingertips. You know, many people are high flying, busy, you know, stress. The stress in today's world, in Nigeria particularly, can be overwhelming. All these are risk factors for kidney disease. So I would like to sound it out very well so that most people should have that consciousness. Have it upon yourself that you should check yourself. My second point is drink enough water. Drink enough water. That cannot be 
overemphasized. So once you drink at least three liters of water daily, how do you know if you're drinking not enough water? When you see that your urine is clouded, you know, or, so, or concentrated and, and dark, that means you're not drinking enough water. When you don't drink enough water, you make yourself vulnerable to having kidney stones. Believe me, if you see somebody with kidney stones and it's an acute emergency, you know, you would always want to drink water. Drink water, drink water. You know, and of course, one of the functions of the kidneys is to eliminate waste and toxins. So the more you drink water, you help its kidneys to eliminate, eliminate all of these things and you prevent kidney stones. Also, try to empty your bladder frequently. Don't hold on to urine. Hold on to urine can increase the chances of urinary tract infections. You know, bacteria that normally should, maybe is not maybe a, an, an asymptomatic bacteria, when it's held in the bladder, when you hold it, you know, there's a tendency for the bacteria to multiply faster and cause urinary tract infections. Also, if some person may have had a UTI, that's a urinary tract infection, ensure to get it treated. Treated orthodox orthodox treatment go meet a doctor let him do the appropriate test for you and give you the right antibiotics please avoid antibiotics abuse it is not proper and also do not use herbs and stuff like that because you don't know what they contain also they may have molecules and content that could be damaging to the kidneys i'll try to make this faster and one additional point again too is you know based on family history to try to control your sugar levels particularly as we get older some people are pre-diabetic pre-diabetic means they they are not diabetic yet but they could be diabetic in the future there are tests that could be done to help check if somebody might be susceptible to being pre-diabetic even diabetes sugar control goes a very long way and how do you control your sugar like i said family history to exercise be mindful of what you eat eat healthy meals you know healthy meals eat a whole lot of fiber vegetables fish fish has a lot of omega-3 free fatty acids you know that could help prevent ckd chronic kidney disease also blood pressure high blood pressure is another very common cause of ckd as we advance in age in this world of stress you know ensure that your blood pressure check and control is normal if you've been told that you are hypertensive it's not because you don't have any symptoms high, high blood pressure is called the silent killer you know because you may be asymptomatic you know doesn't mean that if you don't have high bp ensure you would have regular blood pressure checks and how do you checkmate that you know if you're hypertensive your doctor is going to maybe probably give you some uh, medication you have to be compliant on the medications lifestyle changes like controlling your salt intake you know doing exercise exercise cannot be overemphasized you should exercise at least 150 minutes in a week you know that's like 30 minutes of brisk walking running at least five times weekly try to get adequate sleep you know Try to find means and ways to distress yourself. Another common cause of um, kidney damage, particularly in Nigeria, is indiscriminate use of painkillers. You know, some people may have maybe a toothache or some sprain and have the habit of um, taking two to three or very regular use of uh, painkillers. This can be very damaging to the kidneys. Yes, you can use painkillers occasionally. It's always better to address the root cause of the pain. Okay. Other causes of um, kidney damage may include herbal preparations, you know, taking herbs, what we call toxic nephropathies, you know, the use of bleaching creams in Nigeria. Yes, these days you have all kinds of organic this and organic that. This is not to disparage on people who do legitimate and good quality products in Nigeria, you know, but we should be mindful of what we apply and what we use our bodies because many of these things nobody knows what they do to the body you know that kind of thing yeah also people may want to ask me what about alcohol particularly in nigeria today where you have different kinds of alcohol being 
sold. Every day you, you look at the TV, you look to see different kinds of alcohol sold on the streets by uh, these women who sell them. Yes, alcohol in its moderate forms may not cause kidney damage, but heavy alcohol abuse over a very long period of time and taking all kinds of alcohol could be damaging because it's been reported that fake alcohol exists in Nigeria. Many of this fake alcohol contain things like methanol, isopropanol, you know, those things are, are very nephrotoxic, they're damaging to the kidneys. So someone has to be mindful what you ingest. It's not everything that you pass to you that you take. Yeah. Additionally, smoking of cigarette too, you know, can cause high blood pressure, which of course is a major cause of kidney damage. One other very important thing or factor that can cause nephropathy, which is quite rampant too in our environment, is HIV. You know, that's why I, I advocate for random and um, routine animal testing, you know. Some people may have had HIV and it stayed in the body for a very long time. It can cause nephropathy, what is called HIV associated nephropathy, you know. So, checks, doing annual regular tests is very important, it's very important. So, all in all, I've managed to raise some pointers on the things that could cause Nigerians to have um, CKD, chronic kidney disease. So it's best you go to a good facility, a good laboratory, you know, where you can get your kidney function test done. I would even give you what we call the GFR, the glomerular filtration rates, where it can be calculated, you know. There are very good laboratories in Nigeria that offer such services. You know, those things should be taken seriously. So Thank you very much. We advocate for preventive health and good care. Thank you.